Welcome to the Mother of All Talk Shows, and it's live from Rochdale. Get used to it. As the voters prepare tomorrow to send a humiliating message to the big two parties, Conservative and Labour, in one of the most significant political by-election contests in many decades. This is Cathy Bogan, and I'm here with George Galloway in the town of Rochdale, and George is running in the by-election tomorrow, and he is the leader of the Workers' Party of Britain. George, can you tell me something about why you're running here in Well, Rochdale? first of all, I'm honoured uh, that you came all the way from down under uh, to visit me here in Rochdale. I know you were here mainly for the Julian Assange case, in which I'm vitally interested also. Uh, but it's lovely that you came up here. I'm a very big admirer of Consortium News. Uh, we do a lot of work together, me on your shows, your people on my shows, and long may you continue doing the work that you're doing. Uh, but you've caught me now on the eve of poll. It's unfortunately hectically busy because we're fighting to the last ball. As Imran Khan used to say, we'll play to the last ball. And uh, that includes uh, tonight and tomorrow all day. But I think we stand an exceedingly good chance of winning. Certainly the bookmakers think so. And the bookmakers don't get rich making bad calls very often. So I'm the odds on favourite, quite uh, red hot odds on favourite. But we're not taking anything for granted. Yes. Well, it's interesting. I've been wandering around the town today. And I just talked to everybody anyway, but mm. just about everybody, except for two, said that they weren't going to vote. Mm -hmm. They had a common opinion that politicians are liars mm -hmm. and they promise you the moon mm -hmm. and then you get nothing mm -hmm. when they get elected. Mm -hmm. You're different, George, aren't you? Would you like to yes. explain why? Uh, well, first of all, I don't consider myself a politician. I'm a political leader, yes, but uh, a career politician I'm not. If I had been, I might have gone far. I've been elected six times to Parliament before. Tomorrow might be the seventh. In four different towns and cities, equaling Winston Churchill's record, of which I'm quite uh, chuffed, we stand for a different kind of politics. We think that the pantomime in the House of Commons is a show of two cheeks of the same backside, neither more attractive than the other. You know, we live in an era where people are told to choose the lesser of two evils. I've never followed that, because evil always wins if you do that. And in any case in Britain, it's not possible to discern which is the lesser of the two evils. I could make a good case either way that the Labour leader is just as evil as the Conservative leader. And these labels increasingly mean little. The Conservative Party isn't very conservative, and the Labour Party sure ain't Labour. So uh, these are legacy labels that are increasingly out of touch with their historical basis, uh, and we are something new. We, in a way, you could compare us to how the Labour Party was born. Uh, the workers, such as had votes, all voted for the Liberals until people decided that, well, actually, the working class needs a party that will represent its interest, separate and distinct from the interests of the industrialists yeah. that the Liberals mainly sought to represent. So in that context, we are, if you like, a refoundation uh, of thank you, thank you uh, a refoundation of a party of labor a party of the workers yes and after just 3 years we stand on the brink of electing our first member of parliament well that's good labor was 12 years before they elected a member of parliament yeah but you will be running in about 50 constituencies that that's how many it's looking like 55 now uh, and well, the party is about to double, triple in size. I mean, in the last three weeks, we've had 
500 new members. And if we win here tomorrow, that will be 5,000. Uh, we, we're in a situation in Britain where all over the country, people, they represented dry tinder just waiting for a spark. And I think we're going to be that spark. Yeah. People hate the mainstream parties. Millions of Labour voters now hate the Labour Party. So the ground is very fertile indeed for us. Yes. Yes. Um, so what can you do? Why does Rochdale need a workers' party? In 1844, uh, the movement that became the global co-op movement started right here yeah. in Toad Lane in this town. Imagine, I've been in co-ops in the favelas in Brazil, in the townships in South Africa, all over the world. Mm. The idea that came from Rochdale emerged and spread, and they were called the Rochdale Pioneers. And we are now, 180 years later, we are the new Rochdale Pioneers. We're pioneering the revival of working class politics. And never has there been a greater need for it. We are seeking no less than a Rochdale revival. Mm. We'll follow up the by-election tomorrow with local elections in 12 weeks' time, with a general election no more than 200 days away. Uh, and, pardon me, all over this region, I have in this room received deputations from Oldham, from Bolton, from Blackburn, from Bury, from Greater Manchester, Thameside, uh, all over the Northwest, yeah. there's going to be elections like this. Yeah. Either there'll be Workers' Party candidates or there'll be independents standing with our support. And Labour will lose a very significant number of seats from our electoral intervention. And that's our role. That's what we see. Did that our role. did that sort of start with the ousting of Jeremy Corbyn? That did Yes. Yes. Uh, the that was the death blow for the Labour Party. Mm. And Jeremy will now have to stand as an independent yeah. with our support, of course. Yeah. Uh, and of course thousands have been expelled, uh, suspended, drummed out of their positions. Many of them Jews, incidentally. I mean, never were there more Jews sacrificed in the name of fighting anti-Semitism yeah. than in Keir Starmer's Labour Party. Yeah. The, there was a prominent Jewish councillor in Streatham last night suspended for voting for a ceasefire motion in the local authority. So uh, I believe it was the beginning of the end, yes, when Corbyn was ousted by Starmer. Corbyn should have walked out of the Labour Party there and then. Yeah. He would have taken 100,000, 200,000 people with him if he had. Yeah. Uh, I'm critical of him for the time that he's wasted in not doing that. Having said that, next Monday, I expect to walk into the House of Commons with him by my side. Oh, that'll be fantastic. George, there's... Um, I've heard this, uh, hopefully these numbers are right, but about 25% of the population of Rochdale are from the Muslim community. Now, I just saw that horrible poster. <laughs> shouldn't voice such an opinion, but something about a two-horse race, and one had the English flag and the other the Palestine flag. Do you think that the entire population are aware of how much British money goes into war generally to Ukraine? To yeah, but I, I should make it clear it's not a poster, it's a tweet. Uh, a poster would require more than one person to put it up. Yeah. And the person who drew up the meme doesn't have more than one person. Mm. Uh, he did have him and his wife, but he's asked his wife to take a step back. That person who made that meme will lose his deposit, meaning he'll get fewer than 5% of the votes. Yes. And that, I think, answers your question, that more and more British people are increasingly aware of the role that Britain is playing in this crisis mm -hmm. in the Middle East. Yeah. And 
Of course, 100% of all Muslims feel the pain of Gaza, but no one should underestimate the number of people who are not Muslims who are feeling the pain equally. Uh, and they're seriously underestimating the number of people in Britain that are demanding an end to this and are increasingly bitter about Britain's role within it. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to get a pleasant surprise when you see the electrics verdict tomorrow. Okay, George Galloway, thank you very much and good luck tomorrow. Long life to Consortium News. And to the Workers' Party. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.